Expo 2019 final day, we have Cedric Williams with us today. He is the voice of Don from The Promised Neverland. The Promised Neverland, and also Chitu from Hunter Hunter. Hunter Hunter. Excellent. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So, before we start, how's Anime Expo been for you so far, and have you had any favorite moments? It's been so awesome. I came all four days, and uh, I just love seeing the cosplayers. My, that's my favorite thing to do, is to take a picture of my favorite characters. And uh, the highlight was, I have two. Uh, the highlight, the first highlight was going to the Promised Neverland panel, where I had the Japanese and the English voice actors. Uh, I wasn't featured in that panel, but I got to go backstage and meet the, the creators, and meet the Sayu who, who did uh, Ray, Norman, and Emma, and it was, it was magical. And uh, seeing like Erica, Laura, and Jeannie like talk to their uh, respective Japanese counterparts was, was incredible. And then the other magical moment was today, there's like a group of Promised Neverland cosplayers like chilling together. And I saw a Don cosplayer and I was, I've been looking for one all con. And like I finally found one, I was like, hey, hey are you Don? She, and she, there was a female cosplayer uh, uh, dressing up as him. And she's like, yeah, I'm done. I'm like, I'm the English voice of Donna. She's like, oh my gosh. So then I uh, took a selfie with all of them and uh, I got the whole uh, little bunny from, from the anime. They had like a huge plush. And it was, it was great, it was magical. Awesome. All righty. Um, while you're a relatively new voice actor in the anime scene, at least in the eyes of some anime fans, um, it can often be a long time for the actor to get that breakthrough or break into the scene, um, much less to become a, a household name. When and what made you decide to pursue the craft and how um, did you get there or get here today? Um, okay, I've always loved anime, um, but I came out to LA to uh, pursue on camera acting. And so in the midst of all that, I discovered that voice acting was actually a thing. I used to think that cartoons used to be real, you know, real and they didn't have people talking and so I, I was really childish back then. And then uh, I found out about this studio, uh, Bang Zoom, and uh, when, I, uh, when I went there, um, I, um, you know, had to become, fr I became friends with the casting director through Facebook and, uh, and emails. Uh, eventually I got an uh, open audition and I uh, started off doing Walla, which is like background voices. Like I was student number five, uh, nerd number 38. And uh, you know, like, did you do the homework assignment? Yeah, I did. Oh, awesome, man. You know, just little background voices. Uh, and as time went on, I got started to get like actual auditions for speaking characters um, and didn't book any for a while. Um, I was still pursuing on camera. Uh, in like uh, prelay animation, which is you know American cartoons, um, and, uh, and eventually I got I booked the uh, original animated show, and then uh, for 52 episodes, I'll probably mention that later. Uh, what that project is it's coming really soon, and then I eventually got my first anime role, which is Cheek Two. Excellent. When recording for a character, do you read the manga or watch the sub version off the show first? Or do you go into it blind? I definitely uh, watch the sub version first, and I look at the wiki page to get like a huge like <laughs> biography of the character. I should read the manga though. Uh, that's just another like more research to find out more about the world. So I'm I'm gonna add that to my regimen of uh, research. Um, so so far, what's been your favorite role, and have you ever voiced a character? That you Favorite role has to be Chitu because um, he was my first and he'll always have a special spot in my heart. And uh, how I got that character was just so interesting. Like, I was offered the role and it was because I did another character in that uh, original animation who has a similar vibe with Chitu. So I was offered the role and I was like, what? Oh, my first anime role? And maybe I, I felt so happy because I love anime so much and I was finally able to become a part of it. So yeah, Chitu, and I've never voiced a character I didn't like. I, all the characters I've voiced so far um, have been similar to me in some way, and I've got to add myself, you know, like, you know, put my soul into it, and 
I, I don't think I can hate a character out of my voice ever. Uh, let's see. Um, we covered that. So, um, if you could live the life of one of your characters in the universe and whatnot, the lore that you played, um, who would it be and why? Okay. Uh, well, G2 dies, so I don't. Spoiler. <laughs> I. I uh, so maybe not G2, but he does run fast and he's really cool. I'll, I'll say Don because even though, uh, so uh, what he was before he finds out the thing that makes him want to do the thing, uh, he had a pretty good life. You know, he had a bunch of siblings, siblings that, that he loved, uh, you know, and uh, he lived a normal life like as a normal kid. So maybe, maybe Don, because he does not. <laughs> that, that's good reason. <laughs> have you read the Promise Neverland manga before? No, I haven't. But I currently have it in my Amazon cart. <laughs> I will buy them all. Yeah. So going back to when you first landed Don or uh, Chitu, either one, what was your reaction when you found out the show was coming to Toonami? Ooh, okay. So, uh, Promise Neverland, I heard about it, like, I was, uh, I was doing extra work for a TV show, and this person was like, hey, you should watch the Promise Neverland. This was, like, before I even, like, knew about it. And I was like, Promise Neverland? Oh, it's about, like, Peter Pan? That's what I thought. So, it's like, no, it's about, like, these orphans who, uh, you know, find out about this secret, and now they're trying to escape. I'm like, oh, I'll check it out. And then, eventually, like, I, um... I saw it like on Crunchyroll, Crunchyroll was promoting it, and then um, then shortly after uh, I started watching the um, the sub, I got I got offered the role as Don, and like shortly, I think they were like on episode six, seven, or eight, and we recorded it so fast, and my, my reaction was like, another anime role? Wow, I actually auditioned for another character on, on another like uh, animated show, I didn't get it, and they use that reference for Don. Like, since I did that voice, they were like, oh, okay, here's Don. And so it was like another surprise. Like, it just happened out of nowhere. And I'm like, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, what was it like uh, working with the other cast and crew of The Promise Neverland? Well, in anime, we don't get to record together, unfortunately. But um, you know, we, we sometimes meet up uh, at uh, places, um, you know, just to chill and talk. Uh, sometimes we run into each other at the studio uh, after our sessions are over. Um, and uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram, we we stay uh, communicated. And uh, but working with the director Steve Stanley, he's uh, he's awesome. He really got me into character. Um, and um, the director from uh, Annie Plex, she was there too. Uh, I think she's, she's either the producer or the director uh, from Japan. And uh, it was awesome just like, you know, her approving my, my performance because I really wanted to do a good job in my first session. And uh, the engineers and people at Bangs, and they're, they're always a joy to work with. Are there any, but any behind the scenes stories from the Promised Neverland that you can share with us? Yes, okay, so in episode six, Don has his uh, dramatic moment. And uh, where he like, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to avoid spoilers. Where he attacks somebody, he gets really emotional. Uh, during that session, I had a real like situation where I had to, uh, um, with one of my friends of many years, um, something happened and I was really emotional about it. So I used that, that sadness and that anger and um, bringing up stuff from the past, like uh, of me growing up, uh, wanting to become better and stronger like Don wants to in that scene. I, I conjured up real emotions from my past, like really crying, really like being uh, you know, there in the moment. It was real for me. So how does it feel to be seeing, or more accurately, hearing your work broadcast on Toonami now? I've been watching Toonami for a long time, since I was a little kid, and just seeing my name in those credits. Um, I even remember on Hunter Hunter when both 
because I voice uh, Lynn Koshy as well in, in, uh, in uh, Hunter x Hunter. He's a smaller character, but it, it had my name like Lynn was up here at Cedric L. Williams and then like Chi Chi down here. So my name was listed twice. I'm like, wow. It, it's unreal. Like I'm so I'm so grateful for the opportunity and it I I, I fanboy every time I I give myself on Toonami. It's it's awesome. Back at as early as the uh, Promise Neverland anime was in production, I remember fans around the net saying that this show would be perfect for Toonami to air. Uh, as the voice of Don, uh, did you agree? And when the show was announced, what was your level of excitement? I totally agreed because uh, it's not your it's not a shonen like Dragon Ball Z or Naruto or Bleach. So it's it's more like a psych psychological thriller, horror theme, suspense, and uh, it was good to finally like have a show like that. Um, I think we've had others in the past, but I just love the twist that it has. And uh, and did I did I answer that correctly? What was the last part? Um, what was your level of excitement? My level of excitement. Okay. Uh, my level of excitement was again like over nine thousand. <laughs> <laughs> the Promise Neverland has grown to become a big series since the manga began publication in 2015, culminating to a hit anime series that is now airing on Toonami. For those that might not get it, what personally do you think makes the Promise Neverland such an eventful and appealing series? Okay, so the twist that happens that I won't spoil because um, it goes. You think it's like your typical like you know anime, and then like the thing happens, and then like there's a sense of urgency. There's a character for everybody. There's so many like children um, in in the anime, and and I love how um, the inner monologues. Like I love like seeing what um, um, what Isabel, the mother, what she became. Uh, I love that the characters like had we try to figure out how to escape and it's like it's like a race against time and these are young children having to go through this sort of like life or death situation and uh, it's interesting to see like how they do it because they're all like geniuses and uh, they know how to survive and they each have their own particular skill that they bring to the table. So that kind of segues perfectly to the next question which what are your impressions and, and favorite traits of Don and Don is caring. Don is protective. Don can be a little childish at times uh, and competitive. And uh, in the first episode, he's like, you know, he challenges Norman. He's jealous of Norman because he's like good at tag. And uh, Norman gets higher scores than him. And uh, and as he as these events happen, he becomes more heroic and he does something really cool in the last episode. Uh, season one, so he he grows up uh, to become more mature and more, and he's becoming strong, getting that strength that he wanted, that he was desiring in episode six when he has his breakdown. Speaking of the impressions and whatnot, can we switch over to G2? I yeah. mean, did, did we, I'm not sure if we went over that, but please uh, elaborate more on your impressions of uh, G2. G2. Okay, so G2 is playful, he is loud, he's energetic, and that's me on a good day, uh, energetic and uh, playful. Um, he's a little, he can be dumb sometimes, and he, he can be a little uh, arrogant, he underestimates people, um, you know, he thinks, and he relies too much on his gimmick of being fast. Uh, but I love him for it because uh, he finds out that, you know, you just can't, like, use speed to, um, to destroy your enemies. You have, to be, you have to be smarter. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see his final technique that he learns. Um, I'm so curious of what that technique was. I wish I I'm gonna like look up fan theories on what of what that technique could have been. Um, yeah, that's what I love about it. And I, I love his his, uh, his design too. Um, I wish I could find a cosplayer who does G two. It would be very difficult. Uh, 
I'm not a furry, but I, I think uh, G2 is really cool looking, and uh, I would be his best friend if he didn't try to eat me. <laughs> <laughs> what shows would you recommend for Tommy Toonami to air in the future? Uh, let's see. Uh, Fire Force looks awesome. Um, uh, Dr. Stone looks awesome. A lot of mm -hmm. voting for it here. Um, I hope Promise Neverland Season 2 is on Toonami. Hopefully they continue that. And, uh, let's see. JoJo's already on there. Yeah, I want to see Season 5 on there, definitely. So yeah, those. So, uh, are there any shows that you'd love to have an opportunity to voice a character in, and are there any particular characters in those shows, if, if there are? Yes, absolutely yes. I've been preparing for this. Uh, <laughs> JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Season 5, I want to be Naranja. <laughs> He's very similar to Chitu, and I tend to like do higher pitch characters, uh, higher voice characters that are playful like that, so I think it would be awesome to be Naranja. Uh, yeah, that would be cool. We've already, um, you've already told us that you're not a manga reader at the moment. At the moment but you do want to incorporate it in your regiment. Um, do you know what kind of genre you would lean towards? Uh, I love shonens. I love uh, suspense, thrillers. Um, I would even read a slice of life. I would, you know, it's good to just, uh, you know, have you know, real life events, you know, chill, laid back, you know? Uh, I would like to read a good romance one too, because, you know, so, they got to get ideas on, uh, on my love life, you know. <laughs> Tell us what among your, what are your favorite animes? I prepared this one too. Number one, Death Note. Number two, um, My Hero Academia. Number three, Code Geass. Number four, Full Moon. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Uh, five. One Piece. Number six. Promise Neverland. <laughs> Actually tied for number six, Promise Neverland and Hunter Hunter. I didn't want to put them as number one because that's being biased. <laughs> and uh, yeah, those are my those are my top ones. So is there anything you're currently working on that you're able to tell us about or something you want to tease and get you know, a little promotion about? Yes, uh, I, what I've been foreshadowing this whole time, The Tasty Tales of the Food Truckers. It's uh, original animation. We did 52 episodes. A CGI cartoon. Is, that's why it's been taking a long time. Cartoons take forever. Yeah. Uh, it's about a group of three animal best friends, and they go around the world sharing. They have this cooking show, and they get ingredients from all over the world. And my character, he, his name is Tong. He's like the social media. Uh, he shoots all the, the footage, and he's like, Again, energetic and loud and playful. And uh, the character that uh, probably helped me get a uh, book, uh, The Roll of Chitu. Um, working on a video game that I can't mention, a uh, Cartoon Network pilot that I can't mention, but it'll be really awesome when people, uh, when people finally see it. Uh, that's all I can say for now. Um, stay updated on my Twitter or Instagram. I'll surely share it. See. Is there anything else you would like to add or anything you would like to say to the fans before we close? Yes, I just want to thank you guys so much for supporting Good Anime. Thank you for supporting Dubs. And uh, thank you for living your truth as being nerds. Like, we, get, we used to get picked on back in the day for being nerds, and now everybody wants to be a nerd. So don't ever let anybody tell you that loving superheroes, anime, and video games is, is weird. It's okay to be weird, who wants to be normal? So be weird and live your truth and have fun and spread that joy around the world because we need more of it. And Cedric, where can we follow you on Twitter and Instagram? Can you share your handle with us? Yeah, uh, on Twitter it's Ced Williams Jr. C-E-D-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S-J-R. And Instagram, Cedric L. Williams, C-E-D-R-I-C-L. Williams, W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. Thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you for having me.